In this video, we are going to learn how to use a while loop. We're going to start by writing a very simple counter-controlled while loop. And what this program does, it displays the numbers 1 to 10, each on its own line, in a list box, as shown here on the interface. So we know beforehand that the loop will be executed exactly 10 times, and therefore we can implement it as a counter-controlled loop. I've already created the form, um, so it contains a button, and when that button is clicked, the numbers 1 to 10 will appear in the list box. So I named the button VTN display 1 to 10, I named the list box LST numbers. Okay, so now to create the event handler, we double click on the button. And what we now want to do is write the code that will basically count from 1 to 10 and for each value of the counter it will add that counter to the list box. So I'm going to declare a variable called count or counter and then I am going to initialize the counter to 0 or we will start at 1 because we want um, to start um, adding 1 to the list box. Then we have the while loop and following the word while we have the condition and in this case the condition will be that the counter is less than or equal to 10. Okay, the body of the loop goes within brackets. So what we want to do inside here is we want to add the counter value to the list box. So we just say list numbers dot items dot add and then in brackets counter okay what is important is that inside the while loop we must add one to the counter so that we now go to the next value of the counter so let's just run the program i'll go through the code with you just now again so if i click on the button, it displays the numbers from 1 to 10 in the list box. Okay, so let's just quickly go through the code. So what we have here is we declare a counter variable and this you will do for any counter driven while loop. That counter variable must be initialized. Sometimes it will be initialized to 0, sometimes to 1, sometimes to a completely different number. Um, but depending on the problem that you're trying to solve here, you will decide what the first value of the counter must be. Then, in the while condition, we then use that counter to test whether we have done the, as many iterations of the while loop as we need. So, in this case, counter is less than or equal to 10 because it starts at 1, so it will be true, so it will go into the while loop. In the while loop here, it will now add that value of counter, which is 1, to the list box. Then it will add 1 to the counter, so now counter will become 2. It will go back to the while loop, test the condition again. Okay, so now 2 is less than or equal to 10. So that's still true, so it goes into the loop again. Now it adds the value 2 to the list box. Then it adds 1 to the counter. And so it goes on until the counter reaches the value 11. So when the counter's value was 10, this was still true. It went in, added 10 to the list box, and now here it makes the counter 11. Then it goes back and tests the condition again. And now the condition will be false. So control will jump over the whole while loop and the event handler is done. So the execution stops there. I just want to complete my comment here. Check if counter reached upper bound or something like that. Okay, so yeah, we increment the counter. 
So there are a few things that you will always find in a counter-driven counter while loop or in a, in a program that uses a counter-driven while loop. Those four things are the declaration of the counter variable, the initialization of the counter variable, then a condition in the while loop that tests the value of the counter variable, then inside the while loop, the counter variable must be adjusted. One thing that you want to also make sure of is that you don't end up with an infinite loop. So an infinite loop is a loop that continues and never stops. So your program will initially run, but then during runtime things will go wrong. For example, suppose we forgot to increment the counter. In other words, we forgot to include this statement. If I now run the program without that statement, you will see it won't work correctly. If I click on the button, it's just continuing. You can't even see this because of the scroll wheel. But it added, it started adding numbers, and it will just continue on adding num. Actually, not adding new numbers. It will just continue on adding the number one to the list box. To stop this, I have to go to that stop debugging button there and click on it, and then it will stop. So what happened here is counter is set to 1. The condition tests if it's smaller than 10. Because we are not changing the value of counter inside the while loop, that condition will always be true. So this while loop will just continue on until whenever. Okay, so we just want to put the counter back also, you must check, in this case, the counter increases. Um, if we made the mistake of making the counter decrease, okay, the um, it won't be a syntax error. What will happen now is counter will become less and less, and this condition will again remain false, and we will end up with a never-ending loop. So if you have a while loop, and you run your program and it seems as if nothing happens, there's a very good chance that you have uh, an uh, infinite loop there. Now suppose we wanted this program to write the numbers 1 to 100 instead of 1 to 10 into that list box. This means our counter-driven while loop will have to execute 100 times. So all we need to do is to change that 10 to 100. Now the counter will go from 1 up to 100. When it becomes 101, the loop will stop. So if I run the program now, you will see it displays the values up to 100. Okay, let's do another example. Suppose instead of counting from 1 or displaying the numbers from 1 to 10 or 1 to 100, we want to display the numbers starting from 20 and going downwards to 1. So in our list box, we want to have 20, 19, 18, and so on. This means our counter must now start at 20. Okay, And instead of counting upwards, we're going to count downwards. So we're going to subtract 1 from the counter every time. And over here, we want to now check whether it is greater than or equal to 1. In other words, counter starts at 20. 20 is greater than or equal to 1, so it will add 20 to the items. Then it, might, it, it subtracts 1 from the counter, so the counter now becomes 19. 19 is still greater than 1, so it goes into the loop again. Okay, so it adds 19 to the list and then subtracts 1 again. So now it becomes 18 and so on until counter is equal to 1. Then it will add 1 and now it will subtract 1 and it becomes 0. In that case, counter will now not be greater than or equal to 0 and the loop will stop. Okay. So... Yeah, you can see it starts counting at 20 and it counts down up to 1. Okay, then just the last example. Suppose we want 
the words card one, card two, card three to be um, displayed in the list box. So now we again want to count from one up to ten. Okay. What we want to add to to the um, list box is not only the counter. We want to add a string. Okay, I'm just going to declare here a string called um, list item. Okay, over here I'm going to say list item is equal to the word card plus counter. Okay, and here I'm then going to add list item the list and I must just remember I'm now counting up from 1 to 10 so I must change this to plus plus again so what am I doing I have a list item which is a string that I create from the word card and the counter so the first time it comes in it will be, it make the string card 1 then card 2 and each time it will add that to the list Okay, I did something wrong because it seems that it is in a loop and I made a classic mistake. I forgot to change the condition there. So that must be smaller than because now we're again counting up from 1 up to 10. So if I run it now, it should work. There you go. Okay, so that is our first example of counter-driven while